Welcome to the fame, everyone. I'm your host, Lindsey Cash, with my co-host, Dwayne. Cameron Lawrence, you know those offensive guys, they're always late for meetings. Well, what we are going to do is talk about the Cowboys win over the Giants, as well as other champions on our show, PGA golfer Ryan Palmer and drag boat racer hey, Marty I'm Logan. Not I'm not. This guy's not a stop, she's still my job, is he? No, 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 you're good. The fame starts right now. The fame, more than just the game. Tony, Lindsay, George, and Dwayne, big names, fun and games. Never the same. Welcome to The Fame. It is time for another episode of The Fame, everyone. I'm your host, Lindsay Cash, filling in for Tony Banks. I have some big shoes to fill tonight. Thank you guys for being out here. You know why we're going to have fun? Because the Cowboys are on a six game win streak. How about that? Well, to kick off our show, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my co host, somebody who had a big part in Sunday's win, Dwayne Harris. There he comes. What's up? I love your outfit. Can you give us a little details about that? Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Jays on your feet? Jays, flower sweats, joggers. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the win yesterday. How do you feel right now? Oh, my body hurts so bad. I feel like you're probably pretty sore right now. Yeah, but it feels good, though, when you win. Uh, yeah, six and one. What was the vibe like after the game yesterday? Oh, it was, a, it was an amazing vibe. Everybody was excited, you know, um, just to get the win at home against the Giants. It's a great win for us. Everybody was excited, even the fans. And I have to, going off what you said, I have to give the fans some props. I mean, the Giants had a couple false starts on third down. How about the Cowboys fans making some uh, noise? Give it up the for the fans. Yes. <laughs> Give it up for the fans. Okay. Yeah, they, they did a great job. They did a great job. Great job from the fans. And I have to say, a lot of fans got to reach out to you on Twitter. I saw you retweet someone who said, you need to stop high-stepping. What is this about? How do you deal with people on Twitter? Oh, um, that was a good friend of mine. It's Erica Badu uh, tweeted that. <laughs> and I just retweeted it. <laughs> She's always making fun of me. But it's always love. If you were giving a game ball to somebody, who would you give it to, Dwayne? Um, if I had to give a game ball out, I'd definitely give it to the defense. They did a great job in the fourth quarter, especially in the two minutes, two turnovers. Um, that, was a, that was big. Or I'd just give it to Gavin Escobar. He did a great job. He, he caught two great passes and scored two touchdowns. So that was a great job by him. Well, since Dwayne mentioned defense, I think it's time to bring up our very special guest from the Cowboys defense. Give it up for Cameron Lawrence. All right, all right. Welcome. My man, how we doing? Cam. Glad to have you, Cam. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Looking forward to being out here. Yeah, with Dwayne. You guys uh, get a little bit of work together on Sundays on special teams. We do. Uh, you know, I do a lot of blocking for him. You know, I'm kind of. I don't get all the camera time. The most of the cameras stay on him and the dreads. But uh, you know, I try to open it, open up the hole so he can he can get in the end zone. I think you actually both have some special hair. Cameron's got these, you can't see it now, but I see it at practice, these long locks, and Dwayne's got the dreads. Pretty good duo right here. All right, yeah. Cameron, you're on defense. Tell us a little bit about playing under Coach Marinelli, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Uh, you know, I feel like Coach Marinelli, he's, he's a very peculiar guy, but uh, I feel like he's done a good job coming in this year and kind of turning things around from how our defense was last year. And uh, I mean, as you can see, if you've, if you've watched us play this year, our defense is we're playing fast, we're playing physical, and we're getting a lot of takeaways, which is what Coach Marinelli prides himself on. Yeah, playing very fundamentally sound defense, and something that the fans and the media, our perception is that the Cowboys defense doesn't have any huge headlining names, no stars, no big-time veterans that have been there a long time, but you guys are playing very fundamental defense and playing your roles really well. That's what it seems like. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we actually talked about it the other day, and it's kind of like there's there's not one guy on our defense that that is the star, the star player, and you know we kind of see it as our defense is the star of our defense, and uh, us playing together, you know, us establishing a good brotherhood and playing together on the field, that's kind of our star player is the team as a whole. So another star team, I know you want to talk about your alma mater. Where'd Miss, you go to Mississippi State, <laughs> currently Mississippi number one State in the country. <laughs> so so you're pretty pumped State. about that, right? I am, yeah. You know, I, I kind of pride myself in saying that I kind of helped start or kind of lay the foundation for them. But, 
you know, I can't take all the credit because the past two years I hadn't even been there, and, man, they've really taken off with our quarterback situation. Our defense is playing good, and, I mean, we're number one in the country. So, go dogs. So, you think that's going to last for the rest of the season? I want predictions. Uh, I'm kind of biased, you know. I think it will, but, you know, I'm sure other people have other opinions. But I would like to see us make it to the national championship. Awesome. That's a bold prediction, and I like it. So, I feel like there might be a few more bold predictions for upcoming Monday Night Football. Cowboys, Redskins, one of the most heated rivalries. What's it like? I want to hear from both you guys playing on the Monday Night Stage. I'll start with you, Cam. Uh, I hadn't played on a lot of Monday Night Stages. Uh, I played on a couple last year, but, you know, the atmosphere is a little different from your typical Sunday night game. You know, it's a Monday night prime time. You know, everybody's tuned in, watching on TV. The fans are always fired up and excited for Monday night games. So just the atmosphere is a little different uh, from my experience. You know, maybe different with Dwayne. Oh, for me, uh, Monday night is it's the best game ever. Uh, I think I play my best games on Monday night, especially against the Redskins. <laughs> yeah, baby. How about a round of applause for these guys carrying the Cowboys to their sixth straight win? <laughs> If you're wanting to get involved with the Cowboys game, you've got to check out Game Day Sports Tours. They give you the whole hookup package, a whole weekend involved with the Cowboys. So definitely check it out. That's Game Day Sports Tours. All right, it's time for our first break from the fame, but when we come back, it's time for Beer 101, so don't go anywhere. Bob LaBelle here for Home Marketing Services. My ex-wife, born and bred right here in Dallas, has taught me a lot about Texas. She's always saying, bless your heart when bad things happen to people. It took me about 12 years to figure it out. Smashed my thumb hammering a nail one day, and there she was. Bless your heart. That's when I realized what it really meant is you dumb which brings me to my point, still renting, making the landlord richer, but would rather own your own home and still haven't called HMS. Well, bless your heart. The Fame is sponsored by the Webster Law Firm, your personal injury legal advisors. This is Sean. We saw him holding a Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. In this case, Jimmy Johnson. I, Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> challenge you to a little football game. Don't get nervous. Are we ready? I'm ready. Jimmy Johnson has dominated the electric football circuit. Yeah, look at the little Jimmy run. He's hurt. He's pushing through. He's pushing oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a window. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Your Beer 101 moment brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. Welcome back to The Fame, everyone. It's time for Beer 101, brought to you by Benny Keith Beverages. I'm Lindsay Cash with a new face, brand development specialist, Bucky Burgess. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tell us about what you got here today. Okay, well, we have Montejo, and this beer has been very popular in Mexico for decades and just made its way to the United States. Uh, Montejo gets its name from the Spanish conquistador that it conquered the Yucatan Peninsula. It's a true Mexican beer. Um, it's brewed in Mexico. It's never been brewed outside of Mexico, so they have like a really strong uh, core, how do you say, tradition and uh, they really uphold that as you can see by the, the Vocho that we have outside, which a Vocho is a Mexican taxi cab. It's kind of like an icon in Mexico. Okay, I love it. It's that bright <laughs> shade of green, which is what I see here with these limes. Do yes. you like it with lime? Well, I personally don't, but a lot of people do. Um, so I don't drink with limes, but a lot of my friends do. Okay, so tell us a little choice. bit about the taste of it. Well, it's a light colored beer, but it has, it's, a, it's kind of known for having a, a really crisp finish to it. But as you can see from the beer, just a light color. Great it's color. got a great taste to it. It pairs well, I'm guessing, with these quesadillas we have here. Oh, very well with the quesadillas. And the reason why, it's sriracha sauce in here. So this is really a really good contrast for anything that has spice in it. And, and Monteo in general, it's a great pair with any type of Mexican food. You really can't go wrong. I love it. I yeah. think me and Bucky are going to go have a little bit of this during the break. Stay with <laughs> us. Much more to come on The Fame. Your Beer 101 moment was brought to you by Ben E. Keith Beverages. This is Alex. We saw him holding Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. So we surprised him with a new Buccaneers-themed living room. Alex, come and check this out. Hey, man. You like it? Yeah. Alex. Hey. What the number one Buck fan? I am. I love it. Come with me. Come on, Alex. Look at my backyard. This is crazy. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. What a fire we get. Yeah, yeah. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Bob Lavelle for HMS. 
Now, I know a lot of you are really tired of seeing my face on TV, talking about getting out of the rent race and stop making the landlord richer. And by now you know that HMS helps people find a great home and the perfect mortgage all under one roof. Just wanted you to know that I did try to get someone else to do a spot for HMS, but he was tied up. So I don't always buy houses, but when I do, I use HMS. Call HMS. Welcome to our newest sponsor, AMCAP Mortgage Lending. Welcome to the show for the first time tonight, guys. All right, a few weeks ago, George Selvey got to play golf with our junior golfer, Austin Connolly. So I feel like Dwayne is a little bit jealous. So we're gonna bring up three-time PGA winner, Ryan Palmer. Come on out, Ryan. Thanks so much right. for joining us. Thank you Did for you me. think that you would be sitting on the couch with the, some cowboys a few weeks ago? You know, it's funny. I thought I was doing a radio show. That's why I came so dressed up. But uh, <laughs> I love no, it. no, it's uh, it's great to be sitting here with these guys, especially being over the game yesterday, watching it and hanging out and watching what uh, these cowboys are doing. It's uh, it's exciting. So you've been a Cowboys fan a while. All my life, and uh, season ticket holder, you know, forever. So. Uh, I go every time I'm home. It's um, it's one game I, I don't want to miss, for sure. So how often are you home? A lot more because I'm playing better, so that's even better. So <laughs> <laughs> when you're not playing well, you got to travel more and play more. So I'm able to uh, spend time more at home with the family and, um, you know, show up on Sundays. Yeah, you're the 39th ranked player in the world. That's pretty impressive. What does your season look like? Explain it to some of us. Uh, it was a phenomenal year for sure. Um, I played roughly 23, 24 weeks a year. This year I played about 23, and um, you know I was right there going into the FedEx Cup playoffs that we had, and uh, of course caught a caught a hot player in Billy Horschel the way he played the last last three weeks. But uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun being a part of that, and you know I got the phone call saying sorry that I wasn't going to be on the Ryder Cup team, which is disappointing, but. Uh, it was, a, it was a great season. So when I say Ryder Cup controversy, what comes to <laughs> mind? <laughs> it's been fun uh, watching and reading all the comments and what everybody's been talking about. It was, um, you know, I, I watched it and saw some of the, with his picks and how he played them and stuff. So it was uh, disappointing, not, obviously not winning, but uh, you could tell there was a lot of frustration going on and you read all the comments read twitter it was a uh, it was pretty bad and uh you know hopefully they'll figure it out with this new task force or whatever they're gonna do i mean are you behind the task force i put my name in but that got declined to be on it <laughs> but uh we'll see um we'll see i mean the only way to to solve the Ryder cup problem is to play better so <laughs> we haven't played very good and um you know hopefully it'll get better and uh come hazeltine and 16 you know uh maybe the u.s will win one Okay, so people who are uh, kind of just scratch the surface of golf and they hear your name, Ryan Palmer, do they ever ask if you're related to Arnold Palmer? Uh, cuz. That's what he calls me. So, <laughs> no, no, no relation. Um, I will, uh, you know, I'll get stories told every now and then. Hey, I was with your granddad. I played in this pro-am. I hung out with him, and I'll let them go. I'll kind of let them. I don't want to, you know, burst their bubble. But, you know, a lot of times I got to tell them, look, sorry, there's no relation. So, um, but it's... Uh, it's fun playing golf and uh, carrying that name for sure. Well, we hear that you actually gave up basketball to play golf. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometime in your life? Yeah, I, I was a stud too. <laughs> I played, I played all stars, travel squad, AAU, and then I was about five eight. Oh. And not growing. Forward. So of course my dad always bring me in the in the in the living room. We'd be watching basketball, the NBA or college game. He goes. Can you see one five foot eight white guy playing basketball? <laughs> I said, no. 
And I was pretty, I could shoot the ball too. So, um, but no, when I, when I was told my sophomore year, I would be on varsity, but I wouldn't play. I was like, okay, then I've had enough. And I think everybody knew I was going into golf and getting better at it. And so I kept playing and, you know, good thing it, it panned out. I don't know if I made as much playing basketball, that's for sure. Well, we're going to give you a shot to go back and revisit those days. We have a game called face get ball and you're going to get to play it with Dwayne. All right, I'll feed you over here. You going to feed me? Yeah. Well, I mean. Okay, tilt your head forward yeah. a little bit so it's <laughs> right there. Perfect. Can so, we get some noise in here? Is it? He's revisiting his basketball days. That's it. Just cover, cover. Oh my goodness! <laughs> is, uh, is, is Cuban around? <laughs> oh my gosh. What would your dad say right now? Keep playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two. For... Move it, Dwayne. Hey, hey, you can move it. Help me out here, bro. See? <laughs> I'm not believing what I'm seeing right now. The last one. I mean, here we go, one more. I mean, how do you miss? Oh, never mind. Short, but. Uh... All right, Dwayne, uh, we're going to give you a shot. I bet, oh, there we go, there we go. Better get out of the way. How's that look? I can't see if you're going to make it or not. There's one. There's two. There's three. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I am so impressed yeah, right now. Yeah, it's okay. All right, you guys, that's all the time we have for this segment. I do want to tell you, if it's your first time to ever use Uber, you get $20 off tonight if you use the code THERUSTIC. I love Uber, so definitely hit that up. We've got more to come on our show. Stay with us. sponsors HMS, J. Hilburn Custom Men's Closing, and Hands of Peace. I know a lot of cowboys could use a massage after yesterday. I'm Lindsay Cash with my co-host, Dwayne Harris. Dwayne, I got to ask you, do you yes. like the lake? I love the lake. Who doesn't like the lake? Who doesn't like the lake? We're Texas people. How many of you guys go to the lake when it's hot? I see lots of hands. Um, our next guest hits the lake at the speed of 175 miles an hour. Can I get some noise for Marty Logan, please? Six-time world champion drag boat racer, ladies and gentlemen, welcome! Good job, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate Woo! it. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Woo! So you are a Cowboys fan, Mr. Logan? Yeah, absolutely. Boy, I tell you what, them Cowboys are on a roll, aren't they, guys? Yeah. Woo! You guys have been kicking some butt lately. Oh, yes, we have. Yes, we have. Uh, seems like you've been kicking some butt lately, too, Marty. You've won three times and have a 416-point lead heading into your final race. Is that correct? We've had a lot of fortune this year. Uh, you know, we've, we've been pursuing, pursuing this world championship uh, since the beginning of the season. Uh, I've got to give a, a hats off to my team, to uh, the builder of my boat. He's out in the crowd out today, Travis Tuttle, builds a Texas Outrigger Boats. Best boat on the market, guys. Thank y'all so much. You know, I tell you what, this has been exciting. I don't know if y'all have been checking us out on TV every Saturday night on MAF TV. Uh, Lucas Oil Drag Boat Racing. 
Check it out. If you've never been to a drag boat race, you need to do it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, what's it like? Well, I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we're on a seven-second index. You know, you got about seven seconds to do whatever you're going to do. But I really don't know because I close my eyes most of the time. <laughs> Is that safe? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, you know, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and what, what gets me, Lindsay, is we're not even the fast guys. They have top fuel boats in this drag boat racing. They run 250 miles an hour in three and a half seconds. Unbelievable. 8,000 horsepower. If you've never seen it, folks, you're missing a treat. It is unbelievable. Sounds like a sight to see. I know Dwayne and I should probably get out there soon. Definitely. we got to get out there. I, I'm a guy like to... to go fast, so that sounds like it could be fun for me. You want to ride? I definitely, I definitely <laughs> want to ride on one of the boats. Well, come on out, Dwayne. I guarantee you, we'll give you a ride. Oh, yeah, I definitely. I'm going <laughs> to hold you to that. <laughs> okay, Marty, you own House of Color Collision Repair. What actually got you into drag racing? What's your story? You know, we've, we've been doing drag boat racing a long time. I mean, we started out a long time ago. I'm, you know, I'm what they call a seasoned veteran. You know, I mean, I'm not one of the young guys. We started racing on lakes and rivers, like a lot of you that have your, your fast ski boats or whatever. We did it a lot, you know, for about 30 years, but it got to be where the speeds were too fast and it was a little bit too dangerous. So we started doing the organized circuit and uh, we're running the Lucas Oil Drag Boat Racing Series this year, you know, which is the premier uh, drag boat racing circuit on the planet. And uh, we are so excited. I mean, we've got one race left out in Phoenix, Arizona, the World Finals. As Yogi Berra used to say, it ain't over till it's over. You know, we're, we, uh, we're going out there with, uh, we're going to swing the bat hard as we can and try to bring this world championship home, just like these Dallas Cowboys are going to get in the Super Bowl this year. That's right. That's right. I love it. Maybe in the future you can get a little Cowboy star painted on your boat. That's it. We would love that Cowboy star on the boat. Well, uh, we have something special here. We don't have an actual lake at the Rustic, but we've manufactured our own man-made lake down front. I think your, one of your twin boys may have fallen in already. So uh, what do you say we go down and do a few races, you and Dwayne? Hey, I'm always up for a boat race. Let's do it. I'm, let, I'm, yeah. already, I'm already one and on this show already, so <laughs> let's do it. All right, Dwayne's the red boat, and I'm the yellow boat. And three, two, okay. one. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Okay, uh, Marty, I got a question for you. You did something very special for the family of the slain American hero, Chris Kyle. His wife, Taya, wrote a check for her for $100,000. What really prompted you to do that? You know, that was, that was uh, Lindsay, that was really an honor on our part. Uh, you know, Chris Kyle was an American hero to the highest degree. He was a Navy SEAL, sniper, did his job better. I mean, just, just an amazing guy. He did that job better than anybody had ever done. And, uh, you know, when he, we lost Chris Kyle uh, February 2nd of 2013. Uh, you know, it all started for us. We uh, went out to the side of the road when they did the procession to the Texas Cemetery. And, and I told my wife I wanted to go down there that, that, that morning. I remember it. I'll never forget it. It was a Tuesday morning. It was cold. It was raining. It was drizzly. It was really a, just a nasty day. And uh, we got down there about daylight, and uh, just about it started getting light, and people started showing up on the sides of the road, and it was just, I mean, amazing. By the time the deal started at eight o'clock, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people lined up inside the road with American flags, with Texas flags, and it just it touched our heart. It touched our heart. I mean, you know, I don't know if anybody followed the Chris Kyle possession, but it was just, uh, it was. It was that way all the way down to Austin. I mean, they estimated there was a million people lined the roads for that procession just to pay their respects to Chris Kyle. And um, obviously have a great relationship with his family. And the movie is coming out. Do you think you'll go to the premiere? Uh, yeah, we. Uh, my wife is uh, in, ta in contact with Taya. Taya's a wonderful lady. And uh, we have requested, uh, you know, seats for the premiere. But, you know, it's just a great family. It was an honor. For us to help them out and we got the the journey that we went on we got to hear lots of chris kyle stories and and they were all good he was just a wonderful guy just a good old texas boy who became an american hero very special how about a round of applause for that absolutely
That is all the time we have today here on The Fame. For Cameron Lawrence, my co-host Dwayne Harris, Marty Logan, Ryan Palmer, I'm Lindsay Cash. We do have a special tribute for you. We have TJ Broskoff on stage singing A Ghost Behind the Trigger, a special tribute to Chris Kyle. Well, there was a father and a son Just a cowboy while his horses run Became a brother when the battle had begun And I was a ghost behind the trigger of a gun And I pledged allegiance and took a stand An oath to God and Uncle Sam And I fought the devil from here to kingdom come As a ghost behind the trigger of a gun Was a reaper in a God forsaken land. I witnessed what few could understand. Among the chaos, the rattle and the hum, lived a ghost behind the trigger of a gun. Lies a ghost behind the trigger of a gun. I am a ghost behind the trigger of a gun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. 